Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today we're going to take this laminated wood and make some workshop handles. And if you're new here today, I invite you to subscribe and let's get started making these handles. To speed things up for us today, I've taken some pieces of wood, I've got oak on two sides and maple in the middle, and I've laminated them all together. And they're all nice and dry. All we need to do is go over to this sliding miter and start cutting them into pieces. My laminated boards are five inches wide and I'm cutting them at five and three quarters inch in length. Now I need to do a little bit of layout and I'm going to be using this Forstner bit to drill four holes and I found a matching washer and the reason for the washer is I like to keep the the radiuses the same so I'm going to radius the top here and I'm just going to use this washer as a template. Now the first thing I need to do is measure the sides and I've made this little block of wood this is uh, an inch by an inch and a quarter and I want the sides to be a little bit thicker because they're going to be supporting the bottom so we'll make a line there and a line there so we know those are the sides the top will be there and there now, the other thing I need to do is draw a line between those marks because that's going to be where we'll be drilling the holes and I need to know where that radius is going to be. Now, all I need to do here is just mark a line around there on each one of those. Lots of lines. Now I want to put a mark in here. That's where that radius is going to go. Okay, now the first thing I need to do, I'm going to go to the bandsaw and I'm just going to nip off these ends here and then I'm going to go to my sander uh, and when I come back we'll do the round over. All of my pieces are nicely marked. The next thing I want to do now is take all of them and do a round over. I could do this on my router table, but I'm going to use my trim router instead, and I already have the bit installed. I'm using one of these anti-skid pads for routers, uh, and they work great for little jobs like this. Now I've lined up my base here and I'm using my magnetic base here that we made in another video. I'll put a link to that uh, and I can, all I need to do is move this along and I can line up by eye on this side for drilling these holes. Now the next thing to do is we need to cut the lines basically between each of these circles. And there's a couple of ways to do that. If you have a scroll saw, you can cut those lines on your scroll saw. The advantage with that is you can then use your router and go around each one front and back and do the round over. Or you can do what I'm going to do and that is to go to my table saw and cut a line down the center here and then on my band saw I'm just going to cut make those lines through there. 
Then I'll go back to my router and do the round over on the inside. Now before I get started, if you're using one of these chicken's foot push sticks, do not use it on a little part like this. Uh, these things are dangerous. I'm going to be doing a video in an upcoming episode on push sticks. Um, you could use this one. This is easily a much better push stick on a table saw. Um, but for this kind of thing where we've got small parts, I'm using this one. It's just a piece of plywood about an inch and a half wide. It's got a little catch at the bottom uh, and it traps the wood in there. It's a much, much safer way to go. So there's what our little handles look like. Now I still have to round over the inside of these and we're going to do that in a second. Before I do that, before you cut all of yours flat and straight, um, I'm making a production and you can see that I took some of them and I cut them at an angle, a 15 degree angle. And you're going to see in an upcoming episode why I did that. Now I'm going to round over the insides uh, and you could use a clamp for that. Uh, like like this, as long as the clamp is lower than the base here. I'm using my small parts holder that I made for the router uh, a few weeks ago and this side is firm and I'm just using this side and putting some pressure on it with my fingers because that's all it takes. Well, that concludes my video on making wooden handles for the workshop. And I've got the angled ones and I've got the flat ones. And I've got some things in mind for that. So you'll want to stay tuned and uh, see what we're going to do with these in the upcoming videos. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.